and welcome to another edition of Currently in Quincy. I'm Joe Catalano. On today's program, we get details about the Quincy Police Department's free basic boating safety classes that begin soon out at the Houseneck Maritime Center. First, though, as always, we take a look at the weather and the news for you. Currently in Quincy, just cloudy out there. It's 42 degrees right now. The nor'easter really doesn't get going until tonight. Starts out with wind and rain, and that continues through the overnight hours and through at least the first half of tomorrow with uh, daytime highs today into the mid 40s. Now tomorrow will be windy and rainy throughout the morning hours. The rain will eventually flip over to snow around midday or so or uh, later in the day tomorrow and snow and wind will continue through the day tomorrow afternoon into tomorrow night and into early Wednesday morning. Right now the accumulation map for us shows about a three to six inch range. The real problem will be the winds and the heavy snow could cause some power outages in our area. The storm will eventually taper off as some snow flurries Wednesday afternoon. And in typical March fashion, Thursday will be beautiful. Lots of sunshine, just a few clouds, and a high around 50 degrees. Right now it's just cloudy, 42 degrees here in Quincy. Checking news for you today, a state mediator is now trying to resolve the contract dispute between the Quincy Teachers Union and the city. Both sides agreed to allow the contract talks to go into arbitration after failing to reach a compromise following at least 15 bargaining sessions. Quincy Education Association President Gail Carvalho says the union does not believe the talks came to a stalemate, but agreed to the mediator in the interests of reaching a fair contract. We've been sitting across the table from the district um, since May of the end of May of 2022. Uh, it shouldn't have taken this long to get to this point. The best way to um, assure the long-term quality of the Quincy Public Schools is to settle this contract now, allow the district to retain, uh, recruit new and quality educators, and retain those who have given their lives to the students and families here in Quincy. A main sticking point appears to be parental leave with the union requesting two weeks paid leave and the use of accrued sick leave. The city is offering three weeks of accrued sick leave. The union says that many surrounding communities have much more generous parental leave policies. The last Quincy teacher's contract expired at the end of August. Now, bargaining sessions with that state mediator have been scheduled for March 16th, 23rd, and 27th. Quincy Mayor Thomas Koch's son is one of 16 new firefighters recently sworn in during a ceremony at Quincy City Hall. Thomas Koch Jr. was sworn in by his father, who recused himself from the hiring process to avoid a conflict of interest. Retired Boston Fire Department Chief Joe Finn oversaw the hiring process and offered the new recruits some advice to remain safe on the job. The givers and takers in this world, I would tell you, don't be a taker, be a giver. And, you know, you're going to go through the training the next, I believe, 13 weeks, chief, 13 weeks in the academy. Uh, pay attention. Do what you're supposed to do and never stop learning. The job that you are, uh, actually is not a job, it's a profession that you're entering today, is ever evolving. Uh, the latest challenges in the fire service right now evolve uh, lithium batteries, electric cars, things that technology the fire service hasn't caught up with yet, which creates tremendous problems on the fire ground. And on the fire ground, I would tell you this, make sure you stay protected. And what I mean by that is you're going to learn down the academy. Make sure you wear your PPE, protective, personal protective equipment, your SCBA at all times when you're in a hostile environment. Leading cause of firefighter deaths in the fire service right now is cancer. But you can protect yourselves as long as you follow the right protocols. And the Quincy Fire Department has tremendous protocols surrounding that whole issue. So I, with that, I wish you all the best. Stay safe, stay protected, and hope you get to the other side of the 32 years and you beat them for another 32. <laughs> That's the goal, okay? Congratulations, gentlemen, and best of luck. New firefighter recruits are also U.S. military veterans. The mayor's son served in the U.S. Marine Corps. Now, the new recruits will undergo 13 weeks of training at the former St. Mary's School in West Quincy. The mayor's other son, Cornelius, became a Quincy police officer almost three years ago. A Quincy developer has purchased the site of the former Wollaston Theater. 
Galvin Development Corporation bought the 19,000 square foot lot on Beale Street in Wollaston Center last November for $4.1 million. Galvin bought the property from Michael Fang, who owns the Seamart Grocery Stores. That site has sat vacant since the former theater was demolished in 2016. The theater was closed in 2003 after first opening in 1926. Mayor Thomas Koch says that Galvin is in the process of cleaning some contamination from that site and has not yet announced any future development plans. Galvin has developed several residential properties in Quincy, including the Cliveden Place condos in Quincy Center. A new five-story, 46-unit residential building has been approved for West Quincy. Zoning Board of Appeals recently approved that new building for the corner of Furnacebrook Parkway and Copeland Street. Developer Robert Beniers will demolish several single-family homes at that site to put up the new building. Some residents express concerns about negative traffic impacts, but the developer's attorney, Robert Fleming, said they have data that proves otherwise. Um, in January of this year. Um, some of the same people uh, attended. Uh, I felt we had a good neighbor meeting. Uh, they certainly conveyed uh, the, their, their concerns to us, mainly with respect to traffic. Uh, it was a cordial meeting. We had a great meeting, uh, but they had their concerns. Um, and I, I can't convince anybody, you know, that um, you know, this, this, this Proposal will not exacerbate any conditions that are there at that particular intersection. I, I'm, I'm not here to convince anybody. I listen to, my, to our professionals. You know, you're looking at, and Jason get into this a little bit further as well, but you're looking at a 16 uh, vehicle count during peak hours, you know, over that entire hour. You know, so it's really not, you know, adding that much to, to that area. Um, you know, so we feel comfortable with what's being proposed here uh, in a lot of different respects. The project will also include 102 parking spaces under and around that new building. The zoning board voted 4-1 to one in favor of the project, with member John Himmel casting the lone no vote. A homeless man picked the wrong car to break into in Quincy on Saturday night. Police say 38-year-old Charles Hayes broke into an unmarked Quincy police detective vehicle on Billings Road, right near Tyler Street in North Quincy. About seven o'clock Saturday evening, the detective standing nearby took down Hayes' information after spotting him standing near the open rear door of the vehicle, then discovered the glove box had been ransacked. Some personal electronic items had been stolen. Officers arrested Hayes at the nearby North Quincy T station a short time later, but they also recovered a loaded handgun that Hayes allegedly stole from another car. He now faces charges for the car brakes, along with firearms violations and drug possession. It's our check of news for you today. Coming up, Bob Bell and Steve Elms of the Quincy Police Department are here to tell us about this year's free basic boating safety classes. That's next. Welcome back. A sure sign of spring, at least here in Quincy, is the Quincy Police Marine Unit's free basic boating safety classes at the Hausnack Maritime Center. They are back this year, and back to tell us all about them is Bob Bell and uh, a newcomer, Steve Elms, of the Quincy Police Marine Unit. So, gentlemen, welcome. Thanks for coming over. Thank you. Thanks, Joe. Good morning. Yeah, happy spring, right? Bob, it's here. Happy yeah. spring, right. We're getting slammed tomorrow with a nor'easter. <laughs> Seeing as you brought it up, uh, before we talk about the classes, I do want to ask you about the storm uh, and uh, the particular concerns here along the coast about this particular nor'easter that's coming in. What things should people be aware of? Um, well, it could be a potential to uh, be a very strong storm. Um, the uh, National Weather Service is forecasting winds uh, gusting to 60 plus um, for an extended period of time. Um, so we're hoping that we don't have a repeat of uh, 2017 when uh, Hausneck was cut off uh, with uh, flooding. Um, but we're preparing just in case that does happen. Um, but people should expect um, to hunker down um, for the storm. Uh, it's supposed to start tonight and then not finish until Wednesday morning. Right. Starting with rain, then changing to snow, and we're kind of, looks like we're right on the edge. So we could get a coating to three, we could get three to six. Uh, it's typical. 
Yeah, I heard one forecaster say it's going to be anywhere from two inches to two feet. So he's probably right, right? <laughs> Somewhere in there. Yeah. <laughs> Hedging the bet. When you say you're preparing, um, what does that mean preparation-wise? What are you guys doing for that? Um, well, we make sure that all our emergency vehicles are, are ready to go um, just in case we have to do any uh, evacs uh, from Houseneck, uh, right. which seems to be the area that, that uh, can be a problem. Um, but... Uh, so better to be over prepared and you know expect the worst hope for the best yeah <laughs> now I'm assuming because of the time of the season most boaters don't have their vessels in the water yet is that true that's true okay. right yeah there's, there's really aren't any boats anchored around the uh, the shoreline um, there's a, a few boats in at some of the marinas um, but they should be pretty well protected in, in those there. spots yeah. yes um, any concerns with damage to docks or, or uh, them do boat landing for instance or anything like um, that? Well we take our docks out in the fall and then okay. put them back in the spring okay. um, just so they're not subject to uh, heavy weather. Okay this is really a good time to bring these boating classes um, in because I'm sure as part of uh, the curriculum you talk about preparing for emergencies like this right? That's true yeah. uh, one of the topics we cover is weather mm -hmm. um, and making sure that when, when you're preparing to go out for a day on the water that you check the weather. Uh, it's New England, the weather can change drastically. Um, and you know, they've been forecasting this storm for a few days now, but the intensity um, could go up or down. Mm -hmm. um, and it's always better to prepare for the, the, the downside, a, a windier um, event than, than what's forecast. And uh, I'm assuming too that your recommendation would be don't go out in a boat in the storm if you, if you know it's coming. Ab absolutely not. <laughs> yeah, not yeah, and even stay stay away from the uh, the shoreline. Right. Um, we're th inside the harbor, where you know where Quincy is, it's pretty well protected. But we can still get some pretty good waves. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've seen waves crashing up over the seawall on Quincy Shore Drive. Oh so, yeah. Um, during the times of high tide, you might want to uh, take the inland route, like Hancock Street, yes. <laughs> instead of driving down Quincy Shore Drive. Another good point: don't drive through a flooded area, right? Yes, yeah. absolutely. Don't drive through a flooded area. So it's I mean it's common sense things, but so many times people find themselves in a bad situation during these events. That's true. I mean, if you can stay home, stay home. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so the classes are back this year. Is this the first time they've been in person, Bob, since the pandemic? Um, we ran a couple last spring, okay. but we were uh, shut down by COVID for a couple of years. Yeah. Um, so there's a lot of interest. Uh, people are excited to get back out on the water. Um, Boat sales were up during COVID. Mm. Uh, a lot of people took that as an opportunity to go out and um, socially distance uh, by themselves on the water. Right, what <laughs> better way, right? <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> um, so it's, you know, we're looking looking forward to it. We've had some nice days, like oh, yesterday, sure. yesterday was a beautiful day. Yeah. Um, Thursday's th gonna be great. You know? uh, yeah. yeah, things to watch out for uh, early in the season. You might have a 70 degree day, but you just have to remember that the water temperature is still maybe 40 yeah. and if you end up in the water you're not going to last very long yep. um, so we'll talk we'll talk a little bit about you know wearing life jackets and uh, having communications equipment to call for help um, but it's, it's just important to remember that it's like oh it's a beautiful day let's go out on the boat but if you end up in the water it could be a bad day it could be a bad day really quickly too right yes, yeah. yes. Um, so maybe a little bit of history first about uh, the collaboration between the Quincy Police Marine Unit and the Mass Environmental Police Department when it comes to these classes yeah probably but we've been doing it for about uh, 20 years now wow. um, okay. the environmental police they have you know a, a good staff but they they uh, partner with other um, municipalities and organizations um, police marine units harbor masters to help them uh, get the word out to, to uh, teach the boating safety classes um, so we've been doing that for a while and we've had pretty good success people are you know usually very happy after they've taken the class and they've, they've learned a lot um, you know we don't get into in-depth navigation there are other classes for that but okay. this is uh, a basic boating safety class just like it says yeah. <laughs> right yeah. so how to stay safe on the water how to make sure you meet the legal requirements for safety equipment um, while you're boating which yep. is important you don't want to get jammed up uh, out on the water you want to make sure you have everything uh, you have to have a life jacket for every person on board it has to be the right size um, it has to be f uh, functional not some really old thing um, <laughs> the right size for the person yeah. um, you need to have uh, flares on your boat um, you need to have a fire extinguisher uh, so these are all the things in the class that we talk about and then we we try to uh, tailor it specifically for the Quincy area we'll talk about different hazards out there um, 
there's lots of places you can get into trouble if you don't know what's there. You look, you look out, you see good water, you don't realize there's, there's rocks under there. Uh, we do talk about charts and GPS and just a basic overview of how to use those things. Okay. How to use a, a radio to call for help if you need help. Um, things along those lines. Yeah, and I, I, we talked about this before, but it's always good to have more than one person on board that knows what to do in the event of emergency. Right, emergency. right, yeah, yeah. That, that's right, Joe. A lot, of, a lot of people come to take the class, they'll bring their spouse, um, their kids. The class is open to kids uh, 12 and up. Which is great, yeah. Right, we get a lot of young kids, but yeah. we get um, older people, uh, middle people, um, just people that want to learn how to be safer out there. But sometimes, um, a guy will be out there with his family and nobody else knows how to run the boat but the guy and if something happens to the guy um, what do they do right so having um, your spouse and your kids know what to do is is can be critical absolutely Steve I want to bring you in and uh, talk a little bit about how you got into the marine unit and and uh, your experience um, prior to that well a um, couple of the other officers that were assigned got reassigned to other jobs I uh, showed some interest in it. Okay. I had owned a boat for a couple of years, okay. um, and I took the basic crew membership course um, through uh, the environmental police, taught it in Boston. That's kind of how I got familiar with the job and started with the Marine unit. Okay, so would you recommend the classes to a new Oh, absolutely, really? yeah, absolutely. Definitely, you pick up stuff just owning a boat. Like, I, when I first got a boat, all I knew was red, right, return. Mm -hmm. So I've actually been learning a lot as we move forward. Okay, so red, right, return, that's <laughs> basically how you navigate in and yeah, out of the channel, Yeah, coming in and out of the channel. Even yeah. I know that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Those are kind of the basics and but build on it from there. Yeah, but did you, um, did you kind of develop a list of questions, uh, you know, going into the class that you didn't uh, that you didn't know beforehand? Uh, no, I just kind of went into the class. Okay. You know, kind of the same thing we're doing here. You know, I'm just getting familiar with the unit and yeah. Bob's been showing me a lot and been taking it from there. Very good. Yeah. So you feel you're a safer boater? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. You learn every day out on the water. So what's your role in the classes? What will you be doing when folks come to I just more or less assist him for now up. and you know, until I get more familiar with teaching the class. And, sure. You know. So let's talk about it. The, the first big change, Bob, is the schedule <laughs> has changed. <laughs> right. Well, we were, that's right, Joe. We were originally scheduled to start our first class tomorrow night, yeah, yeah. which is going to be in the middle of the Northeaster. So. <laughs> We decided, you know what, let's uh, let's push it out a week. Yeah. So the first class is going to be postponed from tomorrow night to uh, a week from uh, tomorrow, which will be the Tuesday, the twenty-first. Okay. First uh, day of spring. Oh, great! Uh, it starts at six o'clock, and it, we're h holding them at the um, Housenet Community Room, which is part of the Manit uh, Community Health Building. Yep. Um, You'll, we have a uh, sheet here which you're going to post up that has the uh, address and the information and the sign-up information. There's still plenty of room for people to sign up. Okay. Um, as far as we're concerned, the more people that take the class, the better. Sure. Makes our job yeah, easier. Makes our life easier on the water. Having educated boaters. Yeah, absolutely right. So if they know what to do, they don't have to call you. <laughs> right, but <laughs> we're, we're there. We're happy to help. Um, there's, you know, we talk about that if they get in a bind, how to uh, call. Um, we, we talk about life jackets. We have props. We, we do have some props. Lots of props. Yeah. Different things here. Um, um, life jackets are critical, though, right? It's your first line of defense. If right. You find yourself right. in the water during so an emergency. There's lots of different. And I know the requirements vary for the size of vessel too. Isn't that right? for what you need on board? Yes, okay. but <coughs> for as far as life jackets go, yep. it doesn't vary. It doesn't, you, need a, okay. you need a life jacket for every person on board. Okay. Um, and it could be something, this is what you'd have on a, on a cruise ship. Yep. This is a very uh, bulky type one. That's if you're gonna, if you're gonna be way offshore okay. and the potential if, if you end up in the water, it might take a while for people to rescue you. That's gonna keep you afloat uh, better than any of the others. Keeps not only your head, but basically your upper body. Right. Out of, out of water. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It does a good job like that. Then okay. um, we've got some uh, smaller ones. Well, well, so that is one end of the spectrum. Yep. This is the other end of the spectrum. Yep. This this is just an inflatable life jacket. You wear this. It's very cool and comfortable. Yeah. It has a uh, CO2 cartridge in here. Yep. And when you hit the water, there's a couple of different types. There's ones that are manual that you, you pull this to go off. Some of them have a water sensor. So when you go in the yep. water, it automatically goes off and others have a uh, water pressure sensor that, that will go off. Um, so this, this is what we recommend for most people in the summertime because it, it's very comfortable. It, half the time I drive home with the thing on and my wife's like, hey, you still have your life jacket on. Because uh, you forget that it's on. You brought up a good point also is that when you're on the boat, you need to have that on. So 
legally, yeah. if you are 12 or under and the boat's underway, you have to have a life jacket okay. on. Um, they, they used to require you to wear this all the time, uh, but they, they slackened that requirement oh. to just having it with you. Oh, I didn't uh, know that, okay. Yeah, that, that was a recent development. Okay. But we recommend, the Coast Guard recommends, the environmental police recommend, you have your life jacket on all the time. Um, and can, something can, like this, it's comfortable and light, you wouldn't yeah, mind having on all the It's time, very right? non-intrusive. It's the one that, that Steve was just showing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're not I mean, wearing you that can't all really day. move around yeah. too well. Right, that, that. that's yeah. the old school one. Yeah. Um, th these are the newer ones. You get plenty of room if you're fishing to cast. Right. Yeah. Uh, it's not hot, it's not cumbersome, uh, and it'll keep you safe. Yes. Um, we kind of liken it like if you're driving down the road, um, you want to have your seatbelt on, right? Because if somebody crosses over the yellow line and comes at you, you don't have time to, oh, let me put my seatbelt on. last thing on your mind, right. Yeah. And things, things um, on the boat can happen very quickly. Yeah. When things go bad, they go bad fast. Yeah. So you don't want to find yourself in the water without your life jacket okay. on. Um, that's that's number one. And there's different types of life jackets. Yeah, show the children. We have uh, because, yeah. children's ones. Um, yeah. They have a little strap that goes between the legs, mm -hmm. so that if they end up in the water and they put their arms up, they won't they won't fall off. It'll it'll stay on. Oh, all right. So yeah. if, so if you have this type of one, you want to make sure that that strap is is fastened. Good point. That and we can um, reach down and lift them up, right? Right. Yeah. Yep. You can. Some of them have a strap right here. You can lift down and reach them up. Okay. Um, they have all different colors for the kids. They get Scooby Doo ones. <laughs> um, <laughs> whatever. Whatever's popular door of the explorer probably dating myself what, severely here whatever it takes to get them to wear it right, <laughs> right. whatever it takes to get them to yeah. wear it that, okay. that's the key um, there's also uh, now this we're familiar with throwable. This is, talk about old school yeah, yeah. That's this is old school they call it like a seat cushion style right but um, you're required to have one of these on the boat in addition to, to, like to everything yeah. else yeah so um, so you are required to have this Yes. Okay. So if somebody ends up in the water, you can take this and throw it to them so they have some flotation in case they weren't wearing their life jacket when they went in. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so it's it's important to have this uh, even to mark the spot where they went in. Um, point too. Yeah. But something to hold on to. Um, when you use this, it's yep. not meant to go on your back, which is going to make you turtle and go face down. You want to put your arms through it like this and hold it like hold this. It this, this will float you with your, your okay. face out of the water like that. This is kind of the modern day life preserver that we're used to seeing on the side of the, the ship. Ring, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. The ring, yeah. The ring will work too. It okay. just has to be a throwable. So uh, these are the most popular ones, but some of the larger boats have the uh, life ring. Okay. Um, you might be able to get a little more distance on the throw with the life ring than yes, this. But. Okay. And say you're out on patrol and uh, doing safety checks, for instance, mm -hmm. you want do you check to make sure that, that the vessels are equipped with, with what we're talking about? Yes, you, you yeah. If we're, if we're doing a uh, safety check when we come up on a boat, the first thing we're going to do is ask everybody to put a life jacket on. Okay. And that allows us to make sure that everybody has one. Right. And that, that they're, fits, that they're yes, the right that's size. That's a great point, yeah. <laughs> you, know, you don't have a guy trying to uh, <laughs> put this on uh, when it's for a little kid. Yep, okay. Um, Good to know. So that's important. And there are, I mean, I'm, I'm assuming that you would just advise them at that point, but there are fines, yeah, right? Yeah, there are fines. Yeah. Um, um, for every life jacket you're short, it could cost you a bunch of money. Right. Um, we we view our job. You know, we teach the boating safety class. We view our job as educational. Right. A large part is educational on the water. Um, so, you know, if it's the first time, it's an innocent mistake. Um, it's usually a verbal warning. Um, you know, if we if it's the third time we've seen you out there and you don't have enough, enough life jackets, it's you know some next step. Three strikes and you're out, right? Right. <laughs> yeah. Right. It would have to be a, a written warning yeah. with a fine. Yeah. But again, the overall goal is keep people safe, right? That's our goal: is yeah. to keep people safe. Uh, every year, it's very unfortunate statistics, but we'll lose a few people in Massachusetts to drowning through really? some some type of incident or another. Um, so the stats aren't really good, but they're getting better. Um, and with education, uh, the idea, you know, better equipment, you mm -hmm. don't have to wear the old school you know, neck collar, mm -hmm. you, have, you have something like this, so there's no reason really not to wear one of these. I mean, you can get one of these for a hundred bucks. Um, it's going to last you 10 years. It's okay. pretty cheap insurance, 10, 10 bucks a year. <laughs> I mean, cost shouldn't be a factor when it comes to people's safety, right? Right, yeah. right. And it's not that expensive. Yeah. We've well, only got a couple of minutes, but I want, yeah, I wanted to show some of the safety. The, the next thing we talk about, so say you end up in the water yep. and you need to call for help. This, this is a um, handheld VHF radio. So you can 
call direct to the Coast Guard. Um, if you it's you want to get the kind that's waterproof and that floats. <coughs> Obviously, yeah. Right. Um, so this is again, this is like a hundred dollars. Okay. You can spend a little bit more money and get one with a built-in GPS. There's a button you can push on it, and it sends an automated distress signal uh, to the Coast Guard with your, lo your latitude and longitude, okay. so they know where to come looking for you. Um, but as long as you know approximately where you are, you can call with this one and, and let them know where you are and what the problem is, and uh, somebody will come get you. Yeah, and you go over all, all of this during the class. We talk about all of this during the class, yeah. yep. Um, there are three um, curriculum, or three courses, basically. There are Saturday afternoon classes, and then there are Tuesday evening classes? Yep, we have. Okay. The, so the uh, first class will be next Tuesday evening. It runs for three weeks, and then the following Saturday, we'll be starting a Saturday class, okay. uh, which is usually better for the younger kids. Right. Uh, that'll run 10 to 2 for three weeks. Um, everybody gets a card after successful completion of the class that is a boating safety class, which is accepted in all 50 states. Great. Currently in Massachusetts, it's not required unless you are between the ages of 12 and 15 to have the boating safety certificate, or if you're running a uh, jet ski, <coughs> you need to have the boating safety certificate uh, even up to age 17. Okay. Um, this class will let you uh, run a boat from 12 to uh, 15, and a uh, jet ski from uh, 16 to 17. Right. Um, so it's it's pretty worthwhile. You get that laminated card. Massachusetts doesn't require it for older people, but New Hampshire does. So if you plan on boating in New Hampshire, you can take your Massachusetts card up there, and that'll work for you. And Guys, thank you so much. Uh, out of time, unfortunately. Uh, <laughs> Steve, welcome to the unit and welcome thank to you. the show. Please come back. I hope yeah. you had a good experience. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bob, always a pleasure. Thanks for having Pleasure, Joe. Thanks for having us. We really welcome. appreciate it. And uh, hopefully people will sign up for the classes. Absolutely. We'll put the information up for them. Right. Okay. Thank you very much. Just enough time to check the forecast for you for the rest of the day today. It's quiet, uh, cloudy out there, temperatures in the upper 40s this afternoon. The wind and the rain blows in tonight and it eventually changes over to snow. Three to six inches right now is the forecast here along the coast, but it won't end until sometime during the day on Wednesday. Thursday looks great, sunny and 50 degrees. Thanks again to Bob Bell and Steve Elms for joining us from the Quincy Police Marine Unit. Thank you to our crew. Thank you for watching. Friday here on the show, we learn all about the Quincy Lions Club's uh, upcoming award ceremony. Hope you can join us for that. Meantime, head to our website anytime, qatv.org. You'll find our latest programs there. There's news and information, video on demand, live streaming, and lots more. For all of us here at QATV, I'm Joe Catalano. Have a great week.